Hi, my name is Igor Dejanovic and this is introduction video to TextX. TextX is a tool for building domain-specific languages in Python and it is inspired by Xtext, which is a tool for building the cells in Java. One of the features of TextX is that it work, works like an interpreter, so there will be no code generation for parsing infrastructure. You just give your grammar to TextX and it configures itself to recognize your programs or models. Full documentation is available in this link. You can find here user guides, tutorials, and so on. In this video, I will show you how to install TextX and make some simple language. So let's get started. First, I will make some folder for this demo. Let's call it TextX demo. Okay, now I will use virtual end to make a demo environment. Virtual end is a tool for isolating your uh, projects and your libraries in Python. To activate your virtual environment, you are sourcing actual script. Uh, for bash, it's called activate in a bin folder, and I'm using fish common interpreter, so it's called activate.fish. Now I'm inside the virtual environment. To verify that, I will use pip package manager for, for Python to list all the available libraries. There are only three basic libraries available, pip, set, setup tools and Wii. Now I will use pip to install textx. So I will type pip install textx with a capital X. And the pip will collect textx and all its dependencies and there is only one dependency, it's our page of parser. Now, uh, our text text is installed. If everything is correctly installed, you will have common called text text. Just type text text, and if you have output like this, that, then everything is fine. And I'll start Tmux, and I will start modeling in some simple languages. For this demo, I will make a very simple language for modeling data. So let's start with our first model. I will model some person and the extension will be at. Okay, now uh, in this language we model some entities and each entity has some properties. So let's model person entity. Entity person and we will use curl braces so it's, it will look like uh, C like languages like Java and so on. And there will be inside the, this entity there will be several properties, for example, name of type string and age of type integer. And for example, here we will put a reference to another entity called address. Okay, and let's model address entity. Uh, address has street, which is string, city, which is string, and for example, zip code, which is integer. Okay, this is a very simple model. Now, uh, let's make grammar for this model. I will call this file entity.tx. Tx is extension for text text. And let's start modeling our meta model of grammar. Our grammar consists of a set of rules where each rule defines one concept from our language. At the same time, each rule describes the syntax of that concept. Here it's obvious that we have a concept of an entity. So let's model first that entity. entity. So we type the name of a concept, then put a column, and then we type the body of an entity, and at the end, at the end we type semicolon. The body of the entity contains an expression that defines the syntax of entity and at the same time defines the attributes of this cl class, Python class. We will see what that means in a minute. So each entity starts with a keyword entity and here is the first expression using text text, it's called string match. When you type inside uh, quotation mark, 
some word, it will be matched literally at the input. So each entity starts with keyword entity and after that we have a name of the entity. The name is variable, so it's not always the same. And for that we could, for example, use regular expressions, regular expression written inside slashes. For example, I could write az, az, 0, 9, 1 or more, for example. And this is called regular expression match. But for this particular case, it's easier to just type id. id is a built-in rule that will match identifier. And now we want to collect that id. To collect something matched by the parser, we use expression called assignments. In this particular case, we will call this match name. And this is assignment. We assign what is matched by this rule to the attribute name. And that is an attribute of an entity Python class. After that, we have curly braces, okay, and inside entity body we have one or more properties. So we'll type properties one or more property. Okay, now here we have assignment called one or more. We could also use, for example, zero or more assignment, but let's say for, for now we will use one or more. For, so this means that our entity class will have two attributes, name and properties, which will, be, which will be a list of property objects. Now let's model our properties. So each property has a name, column, and a type. Name is id, we have column which is string match, and we have type which is id. Okay, let's try this grammar. To test grammar we could uh, write a Python script directly or it's easier to use textx command. Textx has two subcommands, one is check and one is visualize. Visualize will do First, we'll check model and meta model, and then make uh, dot files that can be visualized. So let's try to visualize our meta model entity dot text and our model person dot You can also you can only visualize meta model, but if you want to visualize model, you must first specify what uh, what is the meta model for this one. Uh, okay, now we have an error in our model. Meta model is okay, it's fine, but model is not. Because at this place, at line 7, the parser expect, expects end of file. Because uh, with this grammar, we will, we're matching only one entity. Why is that? Because this first rule is a special rule, it's called a root rule, and it's used as a root of the parser. So our model actually contains many entities. So let's model entity model entity model has actually entities and there is one or more entity okay let's try again now visualize and now everything is fine meta model is okay model is okay and we can see our dot files with some dot file visualizer i'm using x dot and let's see entity dot text dot, dot dot it's our meta model our meta model our entity model contains entities one or more entities each entity has a name which is id and each entity has a prop one or more properties and each property has a name and a type which are both ids this is our build these are built-in rules we already use this id but you can use pool number string float and so on Let's see our model. What uh, you're looking here are actual Python objects. Okay, so we have one object called uh, of class entity model. That object has entities list, which has two elements. Each element is of entity class. This first is a person entity. Person entity has uh, properties attribute, which is a list of three elements. First property is a name property with a type of value string. Second is age with a type of value integer and so on. 
looks good, okay. But it would be nice if, for example, this property address, this type is, would be actual reference to this object address, not a string address. This is uh, something like this, uh, is called reference resolve. So this is a reference actual to this object. And in classical parsing techno technologies, you will have to do uh, reference resolving by yourself. But with text X, you can do that automatically. How, is it, how that is done? Instead of writing ID rules at this place, we write entity, but put that in uh, square brackets. Putting that in square brackets tell to text text to not to match entity in this, at this place, but to match the name of the entity and to resolve that to proper entity and to put that reference to a type attribute. Let's see now how this will how this works. Okay, I forgot to save this file. Now I will call visualize. And now meta model is fine, but our model is not. Why is that? Because there is no string entity. Now the parser expects at this place to be the name of some of the entities, and there is no entity called string. We could remedy this by specifying some dummy entities called string and integer. Okay. Sorry. Uh, but to be able to do this, we have to relax this constraint here. We will have to say that there is zero more properties because our string and integer dummy entities has no properties. And now let's see, is everything okay now? It is. And let's visualize our meta model and model now. So our meta model now is different, of course. Properties now has a name and a type which is a reference to an entity. And let's see our model, person model. Our person model is also different. We can see that address has a type which is a reference to uh, address object actually, which is an object of type of class entity. And for example, name property has a type which is a reference to an object string of class entity. It looks better, but uh, it's uh, no awkward to have some dummy entities which has a properties list which is empty and so on. It's much better to introduce uh, something called abstract rule and to define that we have actually two kinds of types. So we have entities and we have simple types. Let's write it. Let's write that the type is actually a reference to a type and the type is simple type for entity. And this is called abstract rule. So we state here that each instance here, each type instance, will be either a simple type instance or entity instance. And let's say what is a simple type. Simple type is start with the keyword, for example, type, and has just a name, which is ID. Okay. And where where we will define these types? Let's put it at the beginning of the model. So let's start let's type simple type types. There is zero or more simple type and each instance is a simple type. Let's see now. So meta model is okay, model is okay, but let's de delete this entity dummy entities. So we have now again those that error that the string is unknown but we have possibility to define our string and integer by typing keyword type and string type and integer. Now let's see if this parse is now. Everything is fine. Let's see our meta model now. So now it's look much better. We have entity model, which has one or more entities. Each entity has properties, zero or more properties. And property has a type, which is a reference to type, abstract class, abstract concept, and the type is either entity or simple type. Let's see our person model. Now everything looks, looks fine. It's similar to the previous model, but we can see that those properties 
that are of simple types actually reference the instance of simple type. There are two instances of simple type string, which is simple type, and integer, which is simple type. And here, address property is still reference to address entity. Okay, now let's see how that works from Python code. I'll write from text text dot meta model import meta model from file and let's instantiate our meta model our meta model meta model from file entity. Okay, now this object knows everything about your language and is capable of parsing your models and creating object graphs. So let's create person model. Meta model model from file person dot end. and here is our model. Let's see what is the type of our model. Type of our model is meta class. But we can see that the name of the class is entity model. And the model has two attributes, entities and simple types. Simple types has two objects of simple type. Let's check what is the first object, what is the name of the first object. It is string. Okay, everything is fine. Let's see entities. Entities. Let's see what is the name of the first entity. It's person. Okay, let's see what are the properties of person object. There are three properties. Let's see what is the name of a first property. It's name. Let's see what is the name of a last of the last property. It is address. Okay. Let's see what is the type of address. It's entity. And its name is address. So you can see that uh, with this grammar, we actually parsed this model and resolved it to a proper Python object graph. You can use now all sorts of, for example, code generation, or you can interpret your, your models and so on. So this is just the basics, uh, what, what you can do with text uh, text, uh, and it's just uh, the tip of the iceberg. There is a lot more you can do with, with text text. I will show in the next videos some more advanced stuff and I will show you how you can, for example, generate source code from your models or, for example, how you can interpret your models. Until then, bye-bye.